What's going on everybody? My name is Jordan. I'm the head coach here at Sabersim and I wanted to record a quick video for you guys today talking about some changes and some improvements you'll see to the app here the next time you sign on to build lineups. We made some improvements to the way that we're handling sorting and ranking lineups with SaberScore. We're calling this SaberScore 2.0 internally here along with some other changes to the way that we deal with ownership, correlation, and late swap in the app. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. Now, the first thing you might see when you open up the app is this new adjusted ownership column. And what adjusted ownership is, is it is taking the player's original ownership projection and making an adjustment to it based on that player's variance. Now, we know that in general, we want to be careful with ownership in DFS. We want to consider fading the chalk to get lower owned plays into our lineup. But if you've been playing DFS for a little while, you know that this isn't a blind thing. We're not blindly fading the chalk. If a player is going to be very highly owned, but they have a great projection and are going to achieve that projection in a lot of our simulations for the game, we don't necessarily want to fade that player. And the adjusted ownership is going to get at that. Players are going to have their adjusted, their regular ownership adjusted down if they are low variance players. If they are expected to achieve their projection uh, often and have a very tight range of outcomes around that player, we're treating the actual effective ownership almost here for that player as lower than what the true ownership might be. In other words, a player whose adjusted ownership is lower than their regular ownership means that yes, they're going to be chalky, but they somewhat deserve that chalkiness. On the flip side, a player whose adjusted ownership is higher than their regular projection might be almost thought of as bad chalk. They're a high variance player and they might not be deserving of the ownership that they're getting. So the adjusted ownership is going to be higher than that to basically take that into account. And we'll see again how the adjusted ownership is taken into account with some of the other things we've added here in just a moment. Now, probably the most obvious change that's going to stand out to you with these new updates is the removal of the ownership fade slider. Now, the ownership fade slider did a decent job of taking ownership into account. It was taking the projections scored by different players in the sims used to build those lineups and adjusting them based on their ownership projections to build your final lineups for your pool. And that, again, did a decent job of handling ownership. The big problem with this, though, is because it was adjusting the projections used to actually go in and build lineups, it was affecting the integrity of the sims used and it was also, at times, dangerous to your process. It was very possible to set your ownership fade high, slider too high, such that it ended up making bad lineups for your build. We've removed the ownership fade slider, and we've instead handled ownership in a more direct way after the build with a new Saber score. So that brings me to our new sorting method, SaberScore 2.0, as we've been calling it here. SaberScore 2.0 is going to take into account the projection, the upside of a lineup, and the adjusted ownership of a lineup in a way that is adjusted based on the sport you're playing and the contest size and the slate size that you are building for. Now, when you pull this up, you'll see by default here, there's a couple different options here for small slates, which I've been treating as every anything about five games and under versus a large slate, which is anything about six games or over here and you can click into these and see what the new components of saber score are they're going to take into account again the projection of a lineup the upside potential of a lineup via its 99th percentile and the average adjusted ownership with the weights here changing depending on which sort you're choosing what this is actually doing is this is taking the upside the total raw scoring upside of a lineup versus that variance adjusted ownership via adjusted ownership and determining what the best lineups in your pool are to play. And this is where everything comes together. Instead of using ownership as a factor that changes the way lineups can be constructed, we're just going to build great lineups based on the sims themselves and sort those lineups to weed out some of the potentially very higher owned, higher variance lineups from your pool and pull up some of the lower owned lineups in your pool. In terms of impact, what this should overall do is make sure that your pool of lineups is much more viable to play. If you typically like to play a diversified pool of lineups, making use of min uniques or player exposures, you should find that the entire set of lineups in your pool are much stronger as a whole. And this is also going to do a better job of actually taking ownership into account the way that we want to. We don't want to play bad lineups just because they're low owned. We want to build the best possible lineups for the slate and then identify the best lowest owned lineups from that pool, which is how this new Saber score and adjusted ownership is going to work together. 
The best part here with some of these changes is this really shouldn't require a lot of changes to your existing process. However you've been building lineups should fit into these new tools pretty easily, really with the only change being select the right Sabre score based on the slate size and the contest that you're using to build those lineups for. Otherwise, you should just notice that the quality of your lineups is better right off the bat. Now, those changes are not the only things going live this week. Another big change, and one that people have been asking for for a long time, is our ownership projections will now update after lock for changing news as the slate progresses. So for tonight's slate, for example, at lock, we'll have two games lock. And let's say we get some news here after lock that Darius Garland is out, opening up some additional value for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Previously, our ownership projections would not update to accommodate that. We would run new sims for the game and identify the new best plays as news was breaking, allowing you to late swap, but ownership projections would not update. They do now. What actually happens here now is we will lock in the ownership projections or an ownership projection very close to what we originally had for the players in the early games and then rebuild new ownership with the new projections and sims after that to account for changing news throughout the slate. This should mean that ownership projections stay much more accurate throughout the slate, and it adds a lot of additional value to the new adjusted ownership and the new Sabre score because those will adjust and change as you're running late swaps to account for this latest news. Now, there are two things to be aware of here with this ownership changing post-lock. The first is that we are not pulling in actual ownerships from contests when we're running these post-lock ownership updates. So, for example, we have Damian Lillard projected to be about 4% owned on tonight's slate. If he actually comes in at 10% owned, we are still going to have his ownership locked in after lock as the original ownership projection we had. That additional 6 percentage points of ownership that he's actually getting in your contest is going to take away from other players at the same positions he has eligible there. So it's worth noting that if we are off on some of our original ownership projections for games that have locked, that can have a ripple effect of how players are projected later throughout the slate. The other thing to remember is that late swap is an edge in most sports, partly because a lot of the field doesn't actually bother to do it or isn't doing it correctly. If there is news that breaks that opens up an elite new value play playing in one of the later games, we might over project that player's ownership projection because we're assuming that the field is swapping rationally and 100% of the field is swapping as best as they can and that's not really the case. Especially in lower stakes contests it's possible that some new values that pop up as the slate goes on and news breaks will actually be over projected based on our ownership projections assuming more of the field is going to swap than actually will. And finally, the last change I wanted to talk about here is not actually in the SaberSim app, but it is in our Discord server in our NBA lineup alerts channel. If you don't already know, what this channel does is it gives you a notification every time a sim for a game kicks off or is completed, and it's also plugged into the Underdog NBA Twitter so you can keep track of news here as news is breaking. The big change is now within one hour of a game tipping off, if there are significant projection changes, which we're defining as a projection change of at least two DraftKings points for a player projected to score 15 or more DraftKings points on the slate, we will uh, list what the actual projection changes were in that sim. This can be very useful as starting lineups are coming out and as news is breaking throughout the slate to identify if there is important information that you need to late swap for. You can see for last night's slate here, we did get a sim that completed for the Charlotte and Detroit game to reflect the starting lineup probably for the Pistons here where Rodney Magruder and James Wiseman got a big boost and Killian Hayes and Jalen Duran got a uh, drop in their projections. This is really useful for identifying again if you need to late swap or how important the news that is coming out uh, is on your actual lineups. If you're not already in the Saberson Discord, there is a link to join in the description of this video, and I highly recommend joining just to be a part of the conversation in Discord, but also to take advantage of these new lineup alerts and projections updates. Now, that's all I've got for this video. Just wanted to record this here and give you guys some context for some of these changes and improvements you're likely seeing in the app over the next couple days. As always, if you have any other questions about this stuff or anything related to the rest of the lineup building process on Sabersim, you can reach out in our Discord or by emailing us at support at sabersim.com. In the meantime, appreciate you all for watching and good luck.